Now, how many times have you been working on a website and find there's a certain little item or element or design tweak that you want to make, but you can't do it inside the customizer and the tools you're using just don't make it very easy. Well, today I've got a solution for that that's going to cost you absolutely nothing. We're going to take a look at Site Origin CSS, a totally free plugin that gives you access to visually update, change and edit loads of CSS options. So let me demonstrate how this works and then you can check it out for yourself. So all you need to do is come over into your plugins and go ahead and search for Site Origin CSS. I've already downloaded and installed it and I'll put a link in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. So once you've done that, all we need to do to access this is to come over into the Appearance tab in your dashboard and you have a new entry called Custom CSS. If we click to open that up, that will now take us into what looks like a pretty basic looking editor area. Not very welcoming, not very inviting, but the power is there. You just need to know how to harness it. So there are two ways in which you can use this. If you are more of a beginner and you want a visual way of working, I would suggest you work in the visual mode. However, you can also work in the expanded mode and we'll take a look at both of these in this video. So first of all, let's go ahead and take a look at the visual mode. Once you click it, that will open up your home page, and inside there you can see we now have three separate tabs on the left hand side. Text, decoration and your layout options and inside each of these you can see there's a selection of different things you can do targeting CSS so for example under the text setting you can come in and change things like your text color your size in line height font weight and all those kinds of things if we open up the font size for example you'll see you've also got a huge array of different measurement methods you can use to scale and make sure that pretty much any kind of method you want to make sure your text flows perfectly is all inside there so let's take a quick look at how this works. Let's say, for example, we want to change this kind of hero text. Let's select it. And you see, once we do, we get this blue box around it. Tell us that's exactly what we selected. If we come underneath, you'll see we've got a hierarchy that shows us where we are on the right hand side and all of the different sub selectors going right the way back up to the root, right back at the beginning. Then underneath that, you get a list of all the different selectors. Again, showing right at the top, the most specific you have selected going right the way back down. So you can see we've got our headline text going back to H1 back and so on and so forth. So you can, if you want to step back through all these different selectors. For this example, though, we want to target this main text. Once we've done that, you can see we can come over and if we want to change the color, for example, we can just change the color inside there. You can see everything updates in real time as we're making those changes. The same thing goes for our font size. Let's say we want to work with M's. So we'll just simply select that option from the list and then we can go ahead and just type in what we want. So let's say we'll set that to three M's and you can see it's considerably smaller. Set it to six, it's 36 and it's absolutely massive. So very easy to manage the controllers. And if you want to get rid and clear any of those settings, you can simply remove the value from there and it kind of sets it back to whatever your theme or builder is actually using as the default value. So you can override things inside you. Same thing goes for things like your alignment. You can see we can align to the left, to the right, to center. We can justify it, whatever we need to do. And if we want to clear that, we can simply click the first option. We can change our font variants. We can change our font styling if we want to. We can set this to be italic, for example. You can see we can strike through. All those options are there and you can easily set those back afterwards. Jumping over to the decoration, you can see inside there we can do things like set your background color, background images. You can upload your images via this, the positioning, opacity, all those kind of options, including border radiuses. So if you want to edit buttons and things, you can attach that. All those settings. And you can see we've got, again, we've got all those options inside there for the various different values you want to use and the units of measurement you want to use with it. So tons of flexibility. Then finally, you've got your layout option, which allows you to control things like your margin, your padding, your positions, and so on. So all those options are in there. Now, there's a couple of things I want to show you. For example, if we scroll down and we see we've got these repeating card elements in a loop, if I click on the first one, that will now select that particular example. And you see, if we come underneath now and we hover over any of these, you see anywhere this is being used in the design will highlight. So when I come over the link for this particular headline, you can see my three links for my headlines all highlight in blue. If we come down to the A, which is just the link, you can see anywhere there's a link on my page now is highlighted and selected. So I can choose where I want to actually make the changes. If I want to step back and have a wide range of changes, I can step back to the CSS selectors. If I want to be very specific, I can choose just the one I want. So for example, I may only want to target the hover effect. I can click on that and now I'm only targeting the hover effect. So there's a ton of control inside you for setting things up.
You'll also notice on the right hand side then it shows you all the various different settings that have been applied to that particular CSS selector. So for example, if we choose the A, you can see it's using my color, my variable color, which is one of the vari variables as part of CSS. It gives us all the information about it. So you can see exactly what's going on there and we can make changes then in the left hand side. So to access the more advanced mode, all we need to do is click on the option on the top right hand corner to expanded mode, open that up and you can see now on the left hand side, we basically get a blank panel. So we can use this in a couple of different ways. Again, we can still come over and select anything on our page. So for example, we'll grab this sort of subheading and then we can come down underneath and choose what we want in any of these options. So for example, we want to be very specific. We can click on that and you see now immediately that pulls up that particular selector on the left hand side. So now I can just go ahead and set whatever I want. So I can start typing in, for example, border, and you can see that now gives me all of the syntax related to that particular CSS option. And then I can just go ahead and grab what I want. So we can say we want to grab the border. We can just select that from there, and then we can start typing in, and we'll say two pixels, for example. So you can see we can very quickly and easily build up our CSS inside. And if you want to add more selectors in, you can simply go ahead, select what you want. So for example, we'll come down to the subheadings. We'll just grab those. We'll click and you can see that inserted in. And now I can just carry on working on anything that I want to. So now you've seen how the hand coding side of things work. If you want to switch back to that visual way of working, you'll notice we get this little eye icon. We can click back on that and bring those options back. So if we want to mix and match between these two different methods, we can do that directly inside the editor itself. And then once we're finished, we can simply click on the little save icon. So we then simply click the tick that'll take us back and then we can just close this down and it'll take us back in and show us all the options we've created, customized and edited. Then all we need to do is go ahead, click on save the CSS in the top right hand corner. And that's now saved that information into our database. So then on the right hand side, you can see we've got all the CSS revisions so we can very easily jump back at any point to see exactly what was going on at that particular point. And then we can just sort of switch back in a typical kind of history fashion. So basically what this does is it gives you a easy way of visually editing your CSS code, or if you want to manually edit it with some nice improvements, you can use this as well. Or you might want to employ a totally hybrid approach. You can do that with Site Origin CSS. Now this is a free plugin, it's very useful, but if you want something way, 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 way more powerful, you may want to check out CSS Hero, which I've covered in its own video here. Check that out next. As always, all applicable links are in the description below. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tetson. Until next time, take care.